Hello everyone, I've returned enlightened from Bali, and now I'd like to explain how to make a more expensive looking interior, but not just to make it lavish by buying expensive materials and furniture, but to make it really stylish. Because it often happens we spend a lot of money on the interior, but it turns out pfft, a complete disaster. Katya, our art director, will help me with this. Katya, hello! Hello friends, make yourself comfortable, enjoy this video. Absolutely, write your comments and leave a like. The paradox is that expensive does not mean stylish, does not mean cool or beautiful, because sometimes you spend a fairly large amount but never achieve the result you want. That is, guys, expensive does not mean super. Although, of course, some budget is required for a nice and beautiful interior. To create a cool interior, it is better to be guided by some rules, some points that may not be immediately obvious. But these are the ones that create a good, high-quality image, and not just expensive items such as golden bus brought from Bali. Excuse me, the golden busts brought from Bali make my minimalist interior very grand. Yes, it looks good in a minimalist interior, but in a rich interior it leads to vulgarity. In short, gold is not for everyone. Aged metal looks very cool, copper looks very cool, likewise if it's a bit shabby or scratched, it also adds a certain texture and depth. It adds to the cost too. Moving on to the first point that we wanted to talk about, well, actually, we have already talked about it, but it is so large-scale and fundamental that we'd better repeat it. It concerns furniture storage systems, which should be integrated into the architecture, built in, and should not catch the eye. Guys, built in means that a wardrobe should look like a wall. That is, not a freestanding wardrobe, but just like a wall, inconspicuous. But if it's possible and the walkways allow it, in our opinion, purely in terms of ergonomics, it is much better to use hinged wardrobe doors. Because unlike sliding doors, they are in the same plane, and visually you get the feeling that they are a wall. Because even the coolest sliding door wardrobe, in any case, will have doors in different planes, and this will no longer be felt as a unified space. Some surface-mounted door handles cheapen the interior. You know, there are such inexpensive, cheap door handles. If once allow, you can make facades with cut-out or built-in handles. For example, handles that are installed from the floor to the level where you open them with your hand. They look very stylish. Moreover, if your plinth does not come directly into the wardrobe, then it is very cool to make cabinets without a plinth. That is, when the facade is from floor to ceiling and there is no horizontal bar. It also looks more solid and cool. Guys, if you have the budget, that's good. But what about those people whose budget is limited? You can use standard systems like IKEA. They're not 9, 10 high, but for example, you can have a top custom made for this system. Or you can buy exactly the same cabinet to place on top, cut it yourself a little, DIY style, and it'll be fine. In fact, Alexei, this is the old IKEA pack system. It is 7 feet 8 inches high, I think. IKEA now offers an office wardrobe, which can be up to 9 feet 10 inches high. It even has white facades, which are exactly what is required for such a minimalist style. They offer models of 6 foot 6 inches, 8 foot 6 inches, and almost 9 foot 10 inches. I don't remember the sizes exactly, but you can get them. Guys, do you know what you can do if the wardrobe does not fill up the entire length from one wall to another, and there are gaps in between? There is a solution. It's called filler panels. These panels are inserted and close all the gaps. They're made from the same material as the facades, so the wardrobe looks like one unit, completely covering the entire wall. So it looks just as if it were a wall. Also, if you plan any repairs or remodeling at the stage when your rough work is going on, you can form niches and walls exactly to fit a standard size wardrobe. On the left and right, leave half an inch to fit in the wardrobe of 78 to 118 inches in length. You can think it through in advance and thereby slightly optimize the budget. In fact, if you want to save money, you just need to think it carefully through in advance. Also, if you still use standard wardrobes, you can embellish them a little. What do I mean by that? Again, you can order door handles separately, some non-standard ones. More interesting handles are often available in stores like Zara Home. 
You can order them there and fix them onto your standard wardrobe. This is for starters. And the second point, speaking about IKEA again, is that they have a system called IVAR. IVAR cabinets look very cool because they have flat fronts and they can be painted in any color. They look great when painted the same color as the walls. And they look really quite stylish, despite the fact that it's kind of like good old IKEA. There can also be the situation when you have a wardrobe along the entire wall, from wall to wall, but it does not reach the ceiling. Then you can turn it into an advantage by lighting the entire wall above the wardrobe. It will look justified because it will be a certain design feature. Make doors large. Use them in a big way. Don't be afraid to use color. For example, you can use color in the form of a large picture, for example, 6 by 6 square. Yes, that is gigantic. Or, well, 5 by 5. It depends on your room. Here. It often happens so, especially when the interior is not designed by a professional, that people are afraid to use any kind of bold or intense color. And the interior turns out to be so monochrome, beige colored. And then when everything is finished and you come to the apartment, you realize that you desire color. And what do you do? Of course, you continue to be afraid to use the colors in a big way. And therefore, color is used in pillows and in curtains, also choosing shades so that the pillows match the curtains. And it turns out to be fragmented. A professional is distinguished precisely by the fact that he considers the use of large areas of color in advance and puts emphasis on them so that everything looks completely different. By the way, guys, you can use large areas of the same color in different rooms. For example, in the kitchen, a large section, a wall or some painting, and in the bathroom, use the same color. This will unite all the rooms. It will feel like you are in a unified space, flowing from one room to another. When you have in your interior, none of these little figurines brought from your favorite resort. Yes, that is the Eiffel Tower from and Bali. something like it. No, I have big statues from Bali. The idea is that you go for large-scale decorations, which look and feel more expensive. It looks like such a large objet d'art, as if you're in a museum. And by the way, yes, you can use, for example, all kinds of items that you found and brought home from your trips. Yes, the rule is that these items should not look like a souvenir shop. Because if they are recognizable, if they bring to mind a certain place, this will make your interior a little cheaper. There will be a feeling that you just brought another souvenir and put it on the shelf. Therefore, it is better to go to some local handicraft stores where local craftsmen make something that is neither limiting nor banal, if it's appropriate to say so. That is something that is not associated with a certain place like the Eiffel Tower or some other souvenirs. Nothing specific comes to mind now. This is exactly what I was trying to achieve. Well, recently I brought a lot of decorations from Bali. And this all weighs about 132 pounds. And if you would like to see what I brought, how I was choosing, and get some advice, follow me on Instagram. I will write a post one of these days. Something else about paintings, Alexi has already mentioned that it is nice to use large sizes. But what if you don't have the budget to order a large, abstract interior painting from some cool artist? Here we can do two things. You can use photos, but if you just browse the internet, download a photo, then you will most likely get something poor quality and the pixels will be visible in the print. Therefore, you should immediately look for photos in good resolution on photo stock sites. The second point is that for non-professionals, it is better to use black and white photos because there will be less risk of making a mistake and getting something incongruous. And if you're a professional designer, you can of course add color to the interior. But it is important that the color in the picture matches the rest of the interior. And by the way guys, big plants are also considered large decorations. But not such small plants that we put on the windowsill, but big, large plants that stand in huge pots, like palm trees that create a rainforest atmosphere in your home.
Lighting has also been discussed many times, but there is no harm in repetition. Lighting should be multiplex. It makes sense to combine invisible light sources in the form of linear illumination along the entire wall or along the height of the entire room together with local light sources. Some kind of suspended lighting or wall lamps illuminating a specific place that creates an atmosphere. An important point, guys. Your lights should be of the same color temperature. Light has different color temperature. It is measured in Kelvin. We say that the light in living rooms should be warm, about 3,000 Kelvin. Why is it so important to make lighting multiplex? Because otherwise, the interior looks flat. That is, when there is the same illumination throughout the room, it looks cheap. By the way, if we go back to the topic of large decorations, it is possible to create a very cool atmosphere with the placement of an interesting large sculpture, and by directing a beam of light on it, a slightly theatrical effect will be created. It will look really cool. The next point that I wanted mentioned, which will visually make your interior look more expensive and stylish, is sofas and couches that are not standing against the wall. That is, when you have space around the sofa, you can go around it or come up from the side. Sadly, this solution is not suitable for all kinds of interior. For example, if you have a small one-room apartment, then of course you cannot put the sofa in the center of the room. But if you have the opportunity to do this, it is better that you allow a space for a walkway behind the sofa. We do not spread furniture on the walls. This is tasteless. Bad taste. Bad taste, yes. Bad. 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 The next very important point is about cluttering of interiors. More precisely, you'd better get rid of various objects that should not be visible. Let's say cables or some other stuff. Well, in general, it is called visual noise. As for the cables, what can we do here? If you are doing repairs from scratch and you still have the opportunity to do this, between the points where the cable should be laid, you need to lay cable channels or conduit directly into the wall. This is a plastic pipe located in the wall. The cable the cable is placed into the pipe and comes out at the two required points, let's say behind the TV and inside a cabinet containing some kind of add-on device. This can be very important for speaker systems, for add-on devices, and for you to say for all sorts of different electrical equipment. Think through in advance what will be visible in the room and your interior will be cleaner. And if your interior is already finished, but you still want to get rid of cables, there are different ways available to deal with them. There are various under-desk baskets or cable holders for chargers. You can also somehow tidy them up so that they are not all lying about under the table in disorder. By the way, guys, there is another very important point on the topic of color. When you are designing an interior, whether you are a designer or just a person who is making an interior for yourself, think about how you use things, where they usually are. Because it often happens that some novice designers make insanely interesting, beautiful and stylish interiors, but it turns out that the homeowner… I don't know has no place to put the ironing board. And here's something from my own personal experience when I worked on one of my first projects. I had a client and I made him a cool stylish interior, but I had no idea he had 200 icons. But I had no idea that he had 200 icons. And they had simply stuck all over the walls. This is a true story from one of my first projects. And also on the issue of storage, in fact, it may sound crazy to someone, but allow for the storage of a variety of shampoos, balms, and other numerous beauty items in the bathroom. It is better to think through this aspect as well and to use identical dispensers or dispensers in the same style for all this. Yes, it is sometimes confusing, pouring shampoos into dispensers, but here either you buy beautiful shampoos and conditioners or you pour them into beautiful dispensers. The same goes for the kitchen. In general, it is better to use, of course, a built-in dispenser in the kitchen, one which is built into the worktop and is not seen. And the same applies to all kinds of dishwashing sponges. Either you hide them or you use beautiful, simple gray ones, not colored ones such as blue, white, green, red or purple, 
Use white, gray, simple sponges. By the way, guys, here is a life hack. It's for those who like these different colorful jars. In the bathroom, you can make a niche which is located in such a way that you do not see it when entering and when in the bathroom. It should be hidden somewhere on the side. To visually make the interior look more expensive, it must be stylish. And it is very important to have thought through such small details. The next point, which is also worth considering in advance, is sockets and switches. Because if they are white and obviously cheap, it will kill the interior. This is again about small details. If you have the budget, you can make sockets that are built right into the wall, flush with the wall. It looks very stylish, very pretty. They just meld into the wall and do not attract any attention at all. By the way, there are non-standard sockets, if I'm not mistaken. This is a German standard socket. And there are Italian ones, where you have a large number of switches joined in one frame. The second point of how you can make switches and sockets stylish is to have them in the same color as the walls. There are different manufacturers that make such switches. If you choose more expensive ones, then install the ones by Jung. Yes, they are very cool and stylish. If on a budget, there is the Celian series by Le Grand, there are many different colors and in principle you can choose something in a matching tone. And as a rule, if we cannot hide something, we will emphasize it. Therefore, the second option is to focus on switches and sockets and make them in graphite or black color. It look especially beautiful on a white wall. But you should have other graphic black elements in the interior too, so that it all contrasts together. For example, handles. Yes, that's it. Doorknobs and black sockets. It looks very stylish. As for the balcony door, very often plastic windows from developers come with a blind plastic bottom panel, and it can be replaced with glass. The space will immediately become lighter, and it will look much cooler. It looks grand. As for the windows, the handles can be replaced on standard white or non-white PVC windows. They can be ordered, just show any manager your handle. You just need an equivalent, but only a nicer one. They can also be made to order. Uh, it is quite cool. It also improves the quality of the interior. And by the way, guys, if you want to change the color of the windows, this can also be done using lamination. We did it on one of our projects. It is very important to include in the interior some beautiful, good radiators. Often, developers install these tasteless, stuffy old white radiators. They make the interior look very cheap. For the interior to look good and expensive, there should be better radiators. They could be column radiators, for example. Vertical radiators also look very cool. Yes, they are more expensive than the usual standard horizontal ones, but they can also be accentuated in the interior. Actually, a radiator can also be the focal point of attention. When doing various works with radiators, we transfer everything, as an engineering project is necessary here, due to the possibility of messing it up. Yes, or it'll be, for example, very cold in your apartment, or maybe not cold, but extremely chilly by the window. The final point for today will be the alignment of the interior along the axes. This is what I mean in simple terms. When we have, for example, several large objects in your living room, a TV, a sofa, an island, and a set of kitchen cabinets, it is desirable, not in every case, but still desirable, that some of these pieces are lined up along the same axis. That is, if you draw an imaginary axis, a line, then they seem to be planted on it. That is, the center of the table is the center of the island, in the center of the kitchen, or the edge of the table, along the edge of the island, along the edge of the kitchen. Yes, guys, another very important point. For example, we are drawing an axis. We have a TV, a coffee table, and a sofa. It is very cool when you have more than one axis in your sofa group. A TV, a coffee table, and a sofa, but there is another axis. For example, a fireplace. That is, the fireplace is on the side. It is also aligned along the axis with a coffee table and, for example, with a sofa. That is, you get two axes in one living room. 
Yes, that is, in your living room when you enter, the point of attraction is not only the TV hanging on the wall, but also some large item. Above this fireplace, there can be, again, either a painting or something else, some kind of decoration. There are different focal points, and this also makes the interior more diverse and smarter. Actually, in fact, there is a deep meaning here, yes, because our brains like some kind of ordered systems. And when we arrange the interior, it becomes cleaner and looks better and richer. So guys, we've had a very detailed video. In fact, it was a short course on interior design. Share your examples. Maybe you have some real experience concerning certain items or solutions that have made your interior cooler. Please share with everyone. I think a carpet on the wall. A carpet on the wall, yes. I think that it will simply be very useful for everyone, and maybe we can get some ideas. Use our tips, watch our YouTube channel, and you will be just fine. And so will we. And we will be fine too. All the best. See you in new videos. Bye. Bye bye.